Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Just in your own words, thank God for the journey so far. Thank him for this week. Nobody else could have done all these things except Jesus Christ. If not for his mercies, if not for his love, we will be consumed. The devil does not take any prisoners. It's just the mercies of God that has brought us this far. And we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. We give you praise. In your own words, just worship him and thank him. we come by the blood of Jesus Christ we plead the blood of Jesus upon ourselves upon this atmosphere anyone who comes to Mount Zion has come to a solution center father we decree open heavens as we cleanse this place with the blood of Jesus Christ we ask for the reign of your spirit every single one of us here has something we came with as an expectation as a desire Lord, before we even begin to ask anything, we want to first of all thank you for what you have done. For even the very fact that we can breathe in and out, we thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you because we go out and we come in. Some people may take it for granted, but there are people who go out and don't come back in. Lord Jesus, we thank you. If for nothing else, for the sacrifice you made on the cross of Calvary, Nobody could have died for us the way you did. We acknowledge your supremacy. We acknowledge you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is your church. Come and have your way. We are your sons and daughters, my father, my king. Come and have your way in our lives. Transform every situation that is negative into one that is positive. As you glorify yourself in our lives this evening. Nobody will live the same. We have come to Mount Zion. We didn't come to visit a friend. We came to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In your presence there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. We magnify you Lord Jesus Christ. The I am that I am. The one that makes a way where there is no way. The Lord of Lords. The Palm of Gilead. The lily of the valley, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the prince of peace. May your name alone, Lord Jesus Christ, be magnified. May your name alone be lifted high. May your name alone be glorified. There remains none like you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We will not fail to thank you. We will not fail to appreciate you. We will not fail to show our gratitude. For the big things and for the little things. I have seen, I've heard, I remember back in the past, I saw a little boy in a hospital. What was the problem? He was eating ground nuts and he entered his windpipe and they had to do a surgery. That is why I thank you for the little things as well as the big things. We don't take it for granted, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God in the highest, amen. Glory be to God in the highest, amen. For His mercy, for His mercy, and your
opportunity to even sing praises and worship to you. We give you praise and we give you thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Good evening everyone. Before you sit down, please welcome two or three people to your left and to your right. Don't do this artificial welcome. You just do your hand like this and, you know, cross your seats, you know, go to one or two people that you've never met before. Tell them you're welcome to a transformational service. You may be seated. Father, I honor you. Spirit, I adore you.
something this morning I was watching the morning service the general service that our pastor our general overseer does on Sundays Sunday mornings all the way from Nigeria and in case you should also form it as a habit to tune in if you're on our um, whatsapp group we always post the YouTube link for the message it's always good to hear from the source You know, last week, Sunday, that's the 25th of September, was the Feast of Trumpets. And the Feast of Trumpets heralds the beginning of a new year according to God's calendar. And God follows, the Jews follow God's calendar. The new year starts in September, around the ending of September. And immediately after the Feast of Trumpets, the heralding of the New Year, there is a 10-day period that is called the 10 days of awe. It's a period of atonement. And what it means is that after the New Year has been announced, the judge, God, sits on the throne. And then there is a court process that decides the destinies of people and nations for that year. So that's a 10-year period where people go into intense repentance, intense fasting, intense humbling of themselves. Because there's a devil who is always accusing. And many times, no matter how you look at yourself, there may be one or two cases that are against you. You know, there are sins of commission, the one you went and did yourself. Then there are sins of omission, the one you didn't know you were supposed to do. So the devil, who is called the accuser of the brethren, is always accusing us. The Bible says, day and night for God. It is a bad thing for a case to be against you and you're not in court to defend yourself. So that 10 day period is where everybody, all the Jews, take out time, enter fasting, humbling themselves so that they can secure the year. They can acquire God's grace for the year. The 10 days will end on Tuesday. So we're still in that time. So we still have the opportunity. And today being the communion service for the month of October, the very first thing we should do is to ask God for mercy. Even as we are humbling ourselves and repenting, the Holy Spirit will be reminding us of things to repent of, which is very important. The Bible says, in fact, any sin that takes any believer to hell is a sin that was not confessed. It's only unconfessed sins that take believers to hell. So the Bible says in John that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to cleanse us, to forgive us of our sins. That's number one. Then to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So today, since we're still in that feast, or rather in that 10 days of all, I want every one of us to ask God for mercy because we need to really position ourselves for this new year. 
We need to be in the right place with God for this new year. Whatever it is, and you know, you know it in your life. You know what you're doing. You know how you're living your life. If you don't want to be a casualty in this year that we've just entered, let us come and ask God for mercy. And remember, mercy is on the basis of one thing only, the blood of Jesus Christ. It is the blood that makes atonement. It is the blood that makes atonement. So as you're asking God for mercy, plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon yourself. Confess your sins to him. Ask God to forgive you. Then cleanse yourself with the blood. It is the blood. Never forget it. It is the blood that makes atonement. Father, I
Father, I come as the priest and I bring the blood of Jesus Christ for every sin confessed tonight. Let your blood do a cleansing work that is perfect in the name of Jesus Christ. For the entire Dominion City UAE family, Lord, let your blood speak on our behalf in the name of Jesus. We decree this new year as we decree this new month open in the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, you're bound. You can no longer torment lives. You can no longer delay progress. You, know, you can no longer... Anybody who is held back by anything, whatever is due you, you're supposed to have accessed it. You have not seen it. You're supposed to get it. You've not gotten it. Kale frate rahabali yakato shiata. Today I command that delay and that barrier and that chain removed and destroyed permanently. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
till the day you will come. Jesus, Jesus, I am your Lord. I am your own Lord. I am your Lord. I am your Lord. Let's just share something little and then we take some prophetic action. Are you ready tonight? Aye, you're not sounding like you're ready. Do you think when you come to church, you just come to a social gathering? When you come to church, you come to a transformational experience. Nobody comes to Zion and lives the same. Nobody. Even the man preaching does not live the same. There are times in services when you can tell when the glory of God is present. Even me preaching, I start making transactions with God because I'm not, I'm not God. I came to encounter God as well. It just happens to be that the preacher is the vessel that God is using to communicate his word in time and in season. Are we together? Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor this is your season. This is your season. Hey. That your neighbor is not serious. Turn to that same neighbor. Tell that same neighbor, this is my season. This is my season. I will manifest the blessings of God. No devil will prevent my blessings. No devil will delay it. No devil can even ask me any question. Because where was the devil when Jesus died on the cross? Say today is my day. I came for heavenly transaction. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor don't, distract me, don't distract me, oh. I must collect my portion. Must collect. If you believe that, shout an amen. amen. I want to tell a story as I bring some things to the fore. And I want to say it in a kind of way. Holy Spirit, please help me to communicate. I trust you for it. And I thank you for it. You're the only one that can teach your counsel. You're the only one that can communicate your presence. Father, I humble myself before you. Wear me like a garment. And wear every one of us. Every one of us. Let us be turned into another human being. Let us be promoted into God mode. Let us be elevated. Let barriers be destroyed. Let paradigms be shattered. Let bondages be melted by your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Come and have your way. Do that which you want to do. And receive all the glory, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. Now, let me give you a kind of scenario. A very wealthy man. Is your father still alive? Okay, just like me, my father is late. But let me use you know, I always like using you for <laughs> demonstration <laughs> because you're nearest to me. Imagine your father is a very wealthy man, very wealthy. And it normally happens in the world that we are in. You can have very wealthy men, and when they acquire a lot of property and a lot of assets, they write a will and share property to different children. Are you with me? And then when they now share all the property, they go to a law court and they legally seal the will to make sure that nobody can contest it. And then when the rich man now dies and goes to heaven, the children only have the will as a proof that this property here and that property there belongs to them. Have you ever seen situations whereby sometimes the will is contested? There are families where the moment the man dies, war. Firstborn is fighting with secondborn. Lastborn has joined forces with thirdborn to fight the firstborn. You just see madness. It becomes like a war zone. 
in some other situations, they may see a full will. They won't contest the full will. They will just take one portion. Maybe that choice property in Dubai. That one is the one that maybe the last born was targeting. Every other thing about the will is okay. But that one. <laughs> and then you see a situation whereby somebody has written a will. Legitimately given the choice property to Mr. X. Mr. Y goes to contest the will. The sad part of it is that the man that wrote the will is already dead. He can't come back to come and say, no, this is not, or no, this is. But what he left you is more than enough for justice to be properly served. Are you with me? That is how it is with us and God. When God came as Christ, what he did was to come and first of all explain a very powerful will which is all the blessings in the Bible. I've heard somebody say there are about 8,000 different blessings in the Bible. 8,000. All these blessings were consummated in Christ and all of them were given to us. But it's given to us as a will which is the Bible. And for that will to be sure and secure, Jesus Christ ratified it with his blood. The problem is that he has now gone to heaven. And so Christians make a little bit of a mistake when they assume that the moment they get born again, and sometimes it's the way we preach it that makes it like that. You know, when we tell people to give their lives to Christ, we tell them everything will start working. In fact, the moment you say, I receive Jesus into my life, you start floating in the sky. And it's never like that. Because what Jesus Christ gave us, hey, how can I get this? Are you following me so far? <laughs> what he gave us was just like what a very rich man gives his children. A will with a lot of goodies inside of it. But there is a devil that contests it. Like it or not, the moment you were born into planet Earth, you were born into a playground of two forces good and evil you don't need to like it it is just the way it is there is a god that wants you blessed but there is a devil that wants you destroyed and the only reason he wants you destroyed is just because you're a human being you don't need to annoy him to want you destroyed because god gave us human beings what the devil has been looking for the devil wanted to be in the image of God, exalted as God. God just created us direct in his image and called us his children, sons and daughters. So the same DNA that runs in God runs in us. The more we discover this thing, the more we begin to manifest like God. And the devil, whenever he sees human beings, he will say, Hi, is it not this one that looks like Adam? I've been trying for many years to be like a God, to be exalted. God just created this one and gave him all the, the, the crowns and told him to take dominion over the entire earth. So never be deceived. There is no day in time or beyond time that the devil will like you. Not possible. Not possible. He just hates the fact that you resemble God. He just hates the fact that you were created in the image of God. So we were born into a battle zone and Christians need to understand that God has done what he will do when he gave us the will Jesus has done what he can do when he came and died and used his blood to ratify the will if a devil is now contesting the will it is our job to rise up and go to the supreme court of heaven and say hey this thing has been signed by the blood Satan, you have no right in this matter. Are you ready to do some transactions tonight? Now, do you know the interesting thing? After Jesus ratified the will and went to heaven, he did not leave us stranded. He gave us tools and equipment to use to steal the avenger, the devil, because he knows that there's a devil that will contest it. Let me give an example. In the will, there is divine prosperity. 
there is fruitfulness. There is promotion. You shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. There is divine protection. No weapon fashion against you shall prosper. I just use this for as example. For some people, there, okay, let me use the fifth one. There is divine provision. My God shall supply what all your needs according to his riches by Christ Jesus. Now see, there are some people who have a revelation. Oh, let me use the sixth one. Divine health. Himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. The chastisement needful for us to have peace was laid upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. I've just brought out six things to use as an example. One person, and it happened to me, when I was growing in God, the area of healing, health, came natural. I don't know why, it came faster. So you will just know that, ah, all these people that are having malaria, me, I won't have. All these people that are having headache, all I just need to do is bind it. And that's the way it is for a lot of believers. There are parts of the will that you catch easier and you internalize faster. But there is another part that may be flooring you. You may have a revelation of divine health, but you don't have a revelation of divine prosperity. You may have a revelation of divine prosperity, but I have seen a lot of rich people that are very sick. And they are born-again Christians. Their own is that once they fall sick, they are not even thinking about a pastor pray for them. They are looking at their money to go and use medical insurance and get themselves treated. And sometimes they stay in hospital for long. But the same will has all that provision. The same will. What am I trying to say? For that person who has a revelation and understanding of divine health, but struggles in the area of divine prosperity, that struggle is a problem of two things. Number one, lack of revelation. Then number two, a devil who doesn't want you to know that side. So what we do as pastors is we teach and expound the aspects of the will so that you can pick them up and brood on them after service and make it to enter your spirit man so that you become the manifestation of that revelation. Are we still here? But there are times. <laughs> I, have a, I have a pastor friend. In the area of divine protection, powerful. The area of divine health, powerful. The area of divine prosperity, problem. If you hear my pastor friend praying, you know when somebody is praying, this thing is no longer praying, it has become groaning. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. When he's praying, you will know that a human being is praying. When we do all night prayers, you know, when <laughs> we used to do all night prayers those days. So they would gather in my house and we would pray the whole night. For those of you who have done all night prayers before, you will notice that in the beginning, maybe if the prayer is starting like 10, everybody is on fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, praying very well. Everybody is alert. 12 o'clock, people are still firing. 1 o'clock, some people have sat down, no longer standing. But they are still praying. That is quarter to sleep. 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, a bunch of people have, <laughs> have started sleeping. Then if you guys were 10, Maybe only three are seriously praying. One is just following the motions. He's tired. <laughs> then another set have started sleeping. This is my friend who will pray with two of us. I will look at every other person. Some people have slept. Some people are not sleeping. Some people are tired of praying. Somebody is in one corner worshiping. He's tired of praying. This guy will put his head. That's, he will kneel down. I don't know. There are people who have both physical energy to pray. As well as spiritual energy to pray. He will put his, he will just kneel down and put his head here. That's what you'll be hearing. Hey. So he kept doing that thing. And after a while, I noticed he broke into a level of prosperity that was it was another level. To the point that he was planning to build a gas station. That's he broke into a major level of prosperity. The devil came in another direction. He didn't have a child. The wife could not conceive. Ha -ha. So you see what I said? You may have a full will, complete package. Sometimes the devil contests everything. Sometimes he will just go to one place. 
just one place and go and put bread there. But has God provided for it? Has he provided the solution? Yes. Has he given you the will? Yes. Has he given you the tools? Yes. Whose job is it to use those tools to get that which you desire? Your job. So the thing started though. I think after a process of about two, was it? No, 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 no. It was almost five years or so. The wife now takes in and they give birth to their daughter. So you see how progression is taking place. Who will you now blame? The truth is that God has provided everything. But at that particular point in time, he has not pressed in to access the benefits of the will in that area. So the Bible recorded in 1 Timothy, it says, fight the good fight of faith. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 12, it says, fight the good, thank you sir, you can sit. Fight the good fight of faith. We are going to do prophetic action. Okay, I know we are already running out of time. But are you following me so far? I'm laying a quick foundation because this month of October into December, we must collect some major blessings. Yeah. Is there enough of these stories? No, I'm telling you the truth. Enough of these stories. If Jesus Christ died for it, why won't we get it? If he paid for... Uh... My friend, come, sir. Come, come. Bring your phone. Is your phone with you? I just want to show you something. I don't know. No, no, no. Come with me. I'm not taking your phone. I want to show something. Do you know there are some times, for instance, you may go to a shop, buy furniture. Maybe you may buy a settee. You may buy a dining table set as well. At that time you bought it, you don't quite have transportation to carry it. So you pay the full money for it, like this phone, and then tell them, I'm coming back next tomorrow with a vehicle to carry it. Do you know that if they make any mistake to sell that thing you've paid for, you can take them to court. If Jesus Christ came and paid for you to have this, that, there is a way I look at it because Christianity has to be real to me. I'm not the sentimental type. My background is an engineering background. My first degree was electronic engineering. My master's degree was telecommunication engineering. So it has to be working. I don't know how to explain it. I'm not the person that you do, hey, be excited. Be, no, no, no. This thing, has, one plus one has to be one, no, I mean two, sorry. You get my point? One plus one has to follow two, and it must be two in Dubai, two in Sharjah, two in Rakasel. It must be what? Two. Don't come and tell me that when I got to Rakasel, I became one and a half. So Christianity had to be working. So I kept asking myself, if this thing has been paid for, why am I not getting it? If my finances have been paid for, because Jesus Christ said it in Corinthians, he says that for our sakes, he became poor, substitution work. So that us, through that root of substitution, might become rich. I went and looked at that scripture. I said, why did the scripture say might? Why did he not say we'll surely become rich? My science mind working. Because like I said, one plus one must be what? Two. So I would say, God, if you have paid for my riches, why are you still putting might be rich? And the explanation was simple. He said there is a part that you have to take responsibility for in order for the riches to come. The Bible said, with God, all things are what? Possible. Not you alone. Not God alone. So sometimes when we are Christians, there is an irresponsible prayer we normally pray. Oh God, bless me. Just remember your daughter. Remember your son. Some of those prayers are just open-ended prayers. No specificity, no target, no... When you have a target, there is a hunger. When you have a desire, there is a hunger. And when... For instance, have you ever been in a situation where you wanted to buy, let's say, like these lovely sneakers, the white sneakers, for instance, and you really desire it, or maybe maybe a white shirt, or it may be a dress. How many of you have been in that kind of situation? You want something, you don't immediately have the money, but you're hungry to buy this powerful t-shirt, you're hungry to buy this powerful dress. How many of you have been in that situation? Sometimes it may be a car. Do you know what you will notice? Anywhere you go, sir, you'll be seeing white white canvas. Anywhere you go, does it not happen to you? You will be asking yourself, where 
how come everywhere I'm seeing this thing that I desire? It is because your focus is on one thing. So when you know in this whole package that Jesus Christ has provided for me, this particular area is somehow, you put attention there, what is in the will concerning my finances? What is in the will concerning my children? What is in the will concerning my promotion? When you find it, take it to the court. And say, Satan, you have no right to put a full stop in this matter. Because somebody has what? Paid for it. And you don't pay for something twice. Thank you, sir. Somebody, if somebody has paid for something, what do you do? All you need to... Oh, if somebody has paid for a car for you, what do you do? That's all though. The extra thing you will add is, you will tell the person that paid, please give me receipt. Let me use it as proof. What is our receipt? The blood of Jesus Christ. And then the word of God. Because the receipt has two things in it. It has the will, which is the word, that says that this has been paid for. Then it has the blood, that is the signature that ratifies it. That is why today's communion, my eyes are red. Enough of these stories. It is either we win or we win. There are no middle grounds. Because if you have a middle ground, oh, the devil will take advantage of you. We don't give him an inch. If it has been paid for, you must get it. Somebody say, if it has been paid for, I must get it. Say it again. If it has been paid for, I must get it. If my wealth has been paid for, I am rich. If my health has been paid for, I am well. If my children have been paid for, I am fruitful. They are blessed. I don't know which one you want to put where, whatever it is you desire. And then do you know the mystery? Do you know the mystery, sir? Two scriptures are always mysterious to me when I look at it. The first one is the Corinthian scripture. But it says, do not glory in men. First Corinthians. It's don't glory in men. Because First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 20, to 20 down. It says, don't glory in men. Because goodness me, all things are yours. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? That's an open check. As far as your eyes can see it. Go and collect. That's an open check. The, the, when I see that scripture, what I hear in my spirit is, if your faith can carry it, collect. That's all I hear. If your faith can carry it. Because it has already been given. Then I now see another scripture in Mark chapter 11. It says, what things soever. You know, every tense and every word in the Bible, I take note of it. He says, what things soever you desire. Do you have a desire? Hey. Do you know, sir, if Christianity were sentiment, a lot of us would be in trouble. Because God doing something for you will depend on his mood. But God made it in such a way that this thing is a law. There is legality involved. And in order for the legality, ah, all through the Christian journey, do you know that for even Jesus Christ to come and die for us, there had to be an antecedent that will give God the legal justification to send his son. What was the antecedent? Abraham gave his son Isaac. So if humanity could give their only son, to God when he requested humanity can demand from God to give his only son for the salvation of mankind he needed legality in everything and in order because do you know <laughs> I'm trying to slow down do you know <laughs> are we following do you know that God is God it did not and it does not take God anything to say, okay, Adam has messed up. Let's just close this program, wipe out the earth, and start afresh. He can do it. He can do it. And devil doesn't have any right to ask because God is what? God. But for God to show that he's a God of justice, 
for God to show that he does everything, precept upon precept. For God to bring legalities that nobody can contest. He said, okay, Adam has fallen. Mankind has fallen. The price for sin is death. How are we going to rectify this? Somebody has to die. And the whole God came as a human being to die for you and I. Which devil is denying us of our prosperity? Which one? Where was the devil when Jesus Christ died? I'm telling you, I know from my intestines that I am rich. It's just a process of time it must manifest. And that's how I know from my intestines that all of you are rich. Don't worry about where you are. There is a process. You're coming out. You're emerging. It's from glory to glory. It's greater and greater. Higher and higher. Are we together? You have entered a thousand. That is small. There is a ten thousand. You will soon enter it from there. Hundred thousand. You will soon enter it from there. Millions. And you will balance in the name of Jesus Christ. What is our boast and confidence? Somebody paid for it. And the one that paid for it is the one that has everything. Both created and uncreated. And is the one that told us that I did not just pay for it for you. I also carried you and put inside of myself. So that everything I have, you also have. That's why the Bible records that we are joint heirs with Christ. There is a confidence we have as Christians. Don't let the devil deny you of what is your right. That is why he now gave us tools after he left the will. One of the tools is the blood of Jesus Christ. Another tool is the name of Jesus Christ. Another tool is your faith. Another tool is the word of God, the Bible, the will. Another tool is your own words. When you use these tools, the devil has no choice but to let go. I use we mean. So the Bible said, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And they love not their life unto death. Who are those that are going to be bold to fight that good fight of faith? What is even that good fight of faith? What is even that good fight of faith? Very simple. The good fight of faith has some ingredients in it. I will just touch this and then we take communion and then we go. Project it. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 12. What is that good fight of faith? Why is it called a good fight? Have you ever seen a fight that is good? It's a fight, oh, but they say it's good. It's called a good fight because you're already the winner. That's why it's called a good fight. Jesus Christ has already fought that battle and won it on your behalf. So the Bible calls us more than conquerors. We are the ones that are going to collect the spoils. When they fight a war between two nations, they now send the United Nations soldiers. They call them peacekeepers. Their job is not to fight. Their job is to maintain the peace. That's like what we are. We are not supposed to fight the devil. We are supposed to collect the spoils because the victory has already been won. But the devil doesn't want you to know, number one. And number two, sometimes he will just go and hold this thing. As he's holding it, he's checking you out. Does this man know that he has rights here? And when he holds it the first time, the man doesn't react. He says, hey, hey, looks like this man doesn't know. He will call one other junior demon. Come and help me and be pulling this thing. Let me. <laughs> That's how he does. So when you be, you'll be on your own and then one, 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 one thing will be painting you here. Ah, this place looks like it's swelling. Once you open your mouth and say, this place looks like it is swelling, you're beginning to buy a report. What they were doing was they wanted to put sickness on you, but they want to test whether you know something. The moment you feel any pain, don't even, oh my goodness, don't even think, what is it? That's a rule I have. And I have taught it my children. The moment you feel anything, don't analyze. Cut it off spiritually. First, after you finish binding the devil and commanding that thing to clear, then you can now start thinking, okay, what actually was that? But at least you have cut it off from the root. Because that's how the devil starts. He starts to send a small report waiting for you to say, hey, it looks like I'm having a headache. I am having a headache. The next thing you will see is, this my headache. Eh? It's pain. You have taken ownership. It has become your my headache. Who, who gave you rights to, instead of you to collect your properties, to collect your cars, to collect your private jet? It is mine. God forbid. We are learning today. So you see, as I'm wrapping up, I said we have tools. One of them is the blood of Jesus. 
One of them is the name of Jesus. One of them is the word of God. Another one is faith. Another one is the anointing. Another one is your own words. Your own words. Because the Bible recorded that life and death are in the power of your own. Your own, your own, your tongue. And those that love it will eat the food thereof. So when we see things that we desire, is it financial prosperity? Because that is one major area I want us to deal with tonight. The area of financial prosperity. Let no devil tell you that you're not supposed to have. That's a lie from the pit of hell. I'm telling you. Okay, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Before I take off. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. This word professed means confess your words. Next verse, verse 13. Verse 13 quickly. I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things. And before Jesus Christ, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. Stop. No, 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 no. Back to 13. Back to 13. He says, I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things. And before Jesus Christ, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession? Ha. So the first one, they are telling me that I have already made some profession of faith in the beginning. That's how I fight the good fight of faith. Get back to verse 12. Let me point it out quickly. Verse 12. Verse 12. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. How? Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Give me another translation. Just to show you that this profession is actually confession. What they are saying is that the way you lay hold of the things of God is with your mouth. That's your first harvesting tool. And he now tells you that just the way you should lay hold of eternal life or God's blessings with your words, that that is how Jesus Christ also stood his ground in faith when he was in front of Pontius Pilate. Fight the good fight of faith in the conflict with evil. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession of faith in the presence of many witnesses. And the Bible records that life and death are in the power of your tongue. And the way you release faith is with your words. Every word you speak is a container. Inside that container, you either have faith in it or you have fear in it. It depends on you. So Romans chapter 10, 10, project it for me. It says, with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto what? Salvation. The word salvation means, in, in, in Aramaic, that word salvation is a composite term that means either saving you from problem or giving you a breakthrough or giving you a blessing. The point is that you move from where you were to a better place. Are we together? Now, Holy Spirit, <laughs> are you guys following me so far? Are you ready for action tonight? Yes, sir. Is there anything you have as a desire you want to see in this month of October? It must be a desire. It cannot be a wish. It must be a desire. If it is a desire, then you will bring out the force of faith. Because faith ah, yeah, 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 is the substance of things hoped for. Do you know what that means? Faith is the ingredient that you put inside your hope that makes your hope to manifest. That's what he's saying. Faith is the substance of the things you're hoping for. So it's just like when you cook a pot of soup. Do you know that when you don't put salt in your pot of soup, the soup has chicken, it has fish, it has all the interesting things inside, but it doesn't have taste. But you want to enjoy a good soup, add salt. Salt is the substance that makes your soup palatable. Faith is the substance that makes your desire come to pass. Are you getting it now? So it is important. When I'm laying these foundations, I'm trying to make faith to rise. I'm trying to show you who you are in Christ and the rights you have in Christ. Because words are container. The Bible records that there are some words that are idle words. 
What, what is an idle word? An idle word is a word that does not have power. But they are faith-filled words and Jesus Christ was a master at speaking faith-filled words. Time has gone. I'm rounding up. It's <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, though. When you're just about to take off and take off and take off, you take off the first one. Hmm, you enjoy it. You want to take off the next one. Timekeeper. <laughs> Until the day you will come. Jesus, I am. Just wait, oh. <laughs> okay, how do we do it? <laughs> how do we do it? My admin is giving me. <laughs> okay. Okay. We will take the communion, but I will explain something. And then when we take the communion, we will do prophetic action and then we close. Is that okay? Jesus, I am your Holy Spirit. Oh, I am your, I am your own. Oh, I am your own. To the day, to the day we Jesus, Jesus, I am. is built on nothing else but Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but only on Jesus' name, on Christ's home, let rock I stand, on the day Christ was crucified he took bread and he broke it and he said this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me by faith this bread and every other element of communion bread here is your body in resurrected majesty power and glory let the fullness of the power of Christ tabernacle in this bread as we partake of it we partake of your body and we enjoy the benefits of the substitution work you did for us on the cross in the mighty name of Jesus Christ also, on the day Christ was crucified, he took wine and he blessed it. And he said, this is the blood of the new covenant shed for the remission of sins. By faith, this drink and every other drink here is your blood containing the life of God. The life of every animal con is contained in the blood. Therefore, the blood of Jesus contains the life of God. As we partake of it, every satanic influence is dethroned because we overcame him by the blood. Every satanic covenant or ancestral cause is destroyed. Every, every, every devouring spirit, every delay, every denial is removed completely in the name of Jesus Christ. And then the fullness of the blessings, the fullness of all that Jesus paid for us will begin to be our testimony every single day in Jesus' name. There is power, power, wonder, power in the blood, in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, there is power, power. There is power, there is power, yeah. power, oh, oh. wonder, working power, in the blood, in the blood, the blood. Yeah, there is power, there is power, power. Yeah. 
moment you take the communion, just open the communion, take the communion. As you take it, open up your mouth and begin to pray and prophesy over your life and destiny. The foundation of the blood is the receipt that proves that you have right to get that thing that you're asking for. You have right because Jesus paid for it. The moment you take the communion, open your mouth and begin to prophesy, begin to decree, begin to command the month of October to align to that which you desire. In the name of Jesus Christ. we command you month of October. You don't do us your good treasures. You don't do us the best jobs. You don't do us divine wealth. You don't do us unusual favor. You don't do us unusual increase. In the name of Jesus Christ, open up your mouth and pray. by the blood of Jesus Christ we make progress this month by the blood of Jesus Christ we prosper this month by the blood of Jesus Christ we are blessed this month by the blood of Jesus Christ we increase this month by the blood of Jesus Christ we have the best opportunities by the blood of Jesus Christ unusual prosperity rests on us the Bible says whatsoever you desire what things soever you desire open your mouth and command it to happen Whatsoever you desire, 
what things soever you desire what things soever you desire speak to your mountain tonight speak to your mountain tonight command your blessings tonight command your prosperity tonight in the name of Jesus And we're going to speak. You will just follow me. I will speak over it. And by the grace of God, in this month of October, you will see the manifestation of it. Now, for some of it, it will be immediate. For some of it, it will be progressive. So let's deal with the area of finances. Project the scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. I'm going to lead you into a confession. Now, I want you to make this confession your daily confession. And I'm showing you this scripture as the basis for the confession. It says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. That you, through his poverty, might be rich. So it shows you that the price has been paid. Now look at the confession. Follow me with the confession. Say, I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Because money comes to me. In increasing quantities. From multiple, channels, from multiple channels on a continuous basis, a continuous basis. In, the in the name of Jesus Christ did you catch that yes, sir. say after me again by the blood of Jesus Christ I thank you Lord Jesus because money comes to me in increasing quantities from multiple sources on a continuous basis in the name of Jesus Christ that will be our portion starting from now till the end of the year and beyond in Jesus name that is how we fight the good fight of what faith you have a scriptural backing then you make confessions that line up with that scripture are we together now Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 11 anybody who is looking for children you can use it anybody who is looking for increase in influence or increase in finances or increase in anointing or whatever it is you can use it the bible says the lord god of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as you are and bless you as he has promised now this is anointing for a thousand fold say by the power in the blood of jesus by the power in the name of jesus i receive anointing for a thousand fold a thousand fold in finances a thousand fold in favor a thousand fold in influence a thousand fold in dominion a thousand fold in promotion a thousand fold in whatever you want to put put it there a thousand fold a thousand fold a thousand fold in anointing a thousand fold i receive it i receive it in the name of jesus 